This is Franklin Graham. Uh, this program is going to be about Ukraine. And of course, uh, there's so much suffering that's going on in that part of the world. The Billy Graham Evangelistic Association has been involved uh, there for many years. My father preached in Kyiv uh, many years ago under communism. And uh, I've had an opportunity to preach in Kyiv and also in Lviv. We saw many thousands of people give their lives to Jesus Christ. The people of Ukraine are suffering. And uh, in this program, I want to show you some of the people we've met, churches that we're working with, and let you see and hear for yourself some of the need. The most church country in Europe is going through the greatest struggle in Europe. Churches destroyed, Christians killed. Vina kinula nas vipicenter bolu. Just, just devastating. On the second and third days of the war, there were lots of explosions. They were so loud and so scary that the earth shook. There's 3,200 churches that just a few months ago were distributing Operation Christmas Child shoeboxes, teaching children about God. Then all of a sudden, the conflict starts. The world has changed. The world's upside down. 11 million Ukrainians have had to flee. Many are scared and afraid. Everywhere was uh, bombing, explosion, everywhere. The tank was turned on the church, waiting to shoot. When this Russian soldier came, they was coming from that gate. Look what the church is going through. We need to be with them in their time of distress and report on it. It's important not to run. Every day it was a miracle. Uh, how I can share if I will run? God is still at work in the church in Ukraine today. Let's go through where the train tracks are. I wanted to come out here just to see it for myself. And then that helps me to be able to communicate it to other people. When you think of these people just standing over here, uh, they got their bag, there's a family with a little dog. And you look at those little bags, that's, uh, that's all the belongings they have. And you wonder what their story is. As a Christian, I want to try to help these people, love these people, but I want them to, I want to do it in the name of Jesus Christ. Well, not my name, but his name, because I, I, we want to be his hands and his feet. See there in a minute, but here is our white <laughs> operations communications area. It's the furthest underground, and that's where we stay. Maybe. How are you ladies? Good, how are you? Nice to see you. Good to see you. Thank you all for being here. We got the hospital set up here. We're in the basement because it's kind of bombproof. And how important it is in a war zone to be where your team can be safe. We have a number of clinics where we're treating hundreds of people every day. But we're also doing food distribution. About 145 tons of food every week that we're distributing throughout the country. We're partnering with over 3,000 churches. I think probably the most important part of our work is the spiritual work. And Father, we, we thank you for these men. Father, we just pray that you would uh, guide them and direct them as they minister to the people of this nation. Father, we just pray that you'll lift them up, strengthen them. And Father, we pray for their families and those that they love. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. We've brought chaplains from the Billy Graham Evangelistic Association to come and to train local chaplains. One of our mission while we're here is to train local pastors and local church members because once we leave, it's their responsibility to continue to reach out to the people that have been devastated. Всегда по людям видно, какие они приходят, ну, видно в их глазах, что они чувствуют. 
всем нужен Иисус. Yeah, will this go in here? Yeah, sorry, sorry. So right now we're having an air raid, and we need to get under the uh, ground right here and wait it out. Yeah, let's go this way, guys. Ну, так, чтобы конкретно что-то меня сбивало с толку, то такого не было. И так как я здесь тоже переселенец, я стараюсь не только переживать за себя, кто я здесь и что мне делать, а и стараться, стараюсь помогать другим людям. I just can imagine what's happen here you know it's uh, hard to see this many people was killed here it was like two two hours of uh, like hell my name is Sergey I am one of the deacon of this church. When the war started, everywhere was uh, bombing, like explosion everywhere. The windows and uh, and house was shaking. Here in Bucha people try to ex escape. Russian soldiers shoot people who try to uh, run or just walk, and they, they, they can do whatever they want to do, because there was no rules for them. <laughs> people from area start coming to the church, because they, they say, we was looking for the hiding place, and we didn't, didn't know where it, it was. And when we go by uh, your church, we see warm light from uh, your church and we decide like can we go there and ask maybe we can save in this place so they came to the church one night it was late and the planes were overhead and the explosions were scary so i brought my five-year-old daughter here to the church Столкнулись наши отряды и российские. Стреляют с крупных калибров. А такое у нас почти целый день происходит. На улицу выходим только подышать. We was not ready to use this uh, place, but yeah. we decided to use this place when the war started. There was the most dangerous soldier in Bucha area who killed, tortured and raped people in, in Bucha. Uh, how they worked, they just opened the door of the basement, dropped grenade and closed the door. That's how they work. But uh, when they came to our uh, basement, God, uh, hold them. People start running from this uh, hole and we have uh, like not big but deeper uh, place where the people can hide. God uh, saved lives in miracle way and the place where they're supposed to go it's here. If you have a child it hurts. Children were hurt, young girls tortured, endured suffering. It breaks my heart. They came with uh, lots of fear, uh, lots of not, un not understanding. So uh, what church do, what we do, like a church, we help people to uh, meet with the God. They were offering us food. Just imagine 170 people and they had to feed us three times a day. But most importantly, they were trying to listen to every person. 
All day it was a uh, challenge. Every day was a challenge. Every night I was exhausted. I was empty because people want, every day they want something, something, and they want to answer. But God gave uh, love to me to give this love to these people. When God told me to stay, for me it was difficult. But God gives this desire and a peace to stay here. That's how I can give glory to God. Stay here and show people uh, God's love. I need to do this. If I don't want to do this, God will find somebody else. But I will lose what I need to receive. Я считаю, что церковь в этот момент она отыграла очень большую роль во время войны, потому что многие церкви они не закрылись, они наоборот открылись. И я не говорю сейчас просто о здании, а я говорю о людях, которые были в этой церкви. Мене звуть Станіслав Грунтковський, я один із пасторів Вірпінської біблійної церкви. Я розумію! Оцінювали служіння по красномовності проповіді і по якості прославлення. Ми оцінювали по кількості людей, які приходили в неділю на богослужіння, ефективність нашої церкви. Війна кинула нас в епіцентр болю, де нема часу проповідувати довго, співати красиво. Просто треба спасати людей, одягати людей, годувати людей і десь поміж цим сказати їм про Христа. Що викликає судоми. You know, we try to pretend that everything is okay, we are strong, but we are not okay. We are deeply wounded. So many churches are destroyed, seminaries are destroyed, extreme suffering. And this will be with us for, for years. It's a huge price. Всередині майже все закінчено було. Перший поверх закінчений і другий поверх закінчений. Тут багато діток було. Кожного року ми проводили табори. Десь 50, 60. Майже кожні вихідні ми сюди приїжджали. Не майже, а це було постійно. Тобто ми всю свою роботу відкладали і приїжджали сюди. Ну, звичайно, біль всередині. Та церква була домом, і ми старались там бути полезними, наскільки це можливо. Анатолій, він займався медіаслуженням. Анатолій класний, світлий. Він, він по житті дуже любив бабушек і дуже любив дітей. Дуже скромний, одного чудового, прекрасного молодого християнина. Мені випала честь. Да, вони посвячені і відкриті служити людям. З Ірпенської біблійної церкви евакуювали людей, відвезли в Київ. Хотіли залишатися в Ірпені, приносити пользу там же в церкві. 
отримали єдину можливість рятуватися через розбитий Романківський міст. Був на річці, він зламан. І от якраз в цьому моменті було дуже опасно. Туди падали там, машина там упала, там дуже трудно було переходити, тим більше маленьким діткам і пожилим людям. Анатолій допомагав їм переходити у самому небезпечному місці. Поїхати на цей мост, і він, і ще троє хлопців. Почав біжати, переводити їх на, на автобус. Якраз почався обстріл. В той день я почув це від старшого пастора новину, що Анатолій загинув. Мені хотілося кричати. Я сказав, я не зможу дружині сказати. Я не зможу. Ближе к пяти, где-то так, я увидела, у, ну, в соцсетях увидела фото, которые выставили журналисты с того моста, где было полностью накрыто тело, и видно было только кисть с рукой. Сердце мне говорит, это его рука, а голова говорит, нет, это не может быть. Когда я пришла на то место, я почувствовала взрыв в мою душу. Я ходила по тому мосту и переживала то грусть, то радость от того, что грусть от того, что грусть от того, что его больше нет, а радость от того, что я точно знаю, что в тот момент он был очень счастлив в радости, в прославлении. Ісуса. Якщо ти пережив спасіння реальне, ти сам хочеш спасати. Тож він хотів, аби люди також пережили те саме. I have been encouraged by the witness of the church. Not only is it an encouragement to me, but a little bit of a rebuke too. Because I just asked myself, if I were in their shoes, would I be able to do this myself? Where the world around you is falling apart, but you dig your heels in, and you say, this is where God has called me for such an hour as this. When I joined those who decided to stay, I said, this is the time for action, not words. And everything that we've preached, we must do now. It's important not to run. For me, like, I want to run. But like a Christian, I want to stay. Because I need to stay here and show people God's love. I didn't believe much. I didn't believe in God at all. It was hard for me to believe in God because I believed in science. When the war started, I felt puzzled and afraid. People who came here without any idea of, about God and what God do, they start to read the Bible they see all miracle what God made for us, and they start to realize God loved them. This is how gospel works. And lots of people give their lives to God here 
and this basement. Sergei preached the word of God to me. And the words he said to me were like a bright light in the midst of darkness. It's new. It's something I had never felt before. I have begun to think differently. It's like a new life. It's a shame that it was a war that made it possible for me to meet Jesus. The only hope is the gospel of Jesus Christ. That's the only hope. As I witnessed the suffering and saw how the church was being affected, I felt that it was important to have a special service partnering with the church in Ukraine. A service that could be aired on television that would proclaim the hope of the gospel and encourage people to pray for this nation. Welcome to Franklin Graham's Easter message from Ukraine, presented by the Billy Graham Evangelistic Association, featuring inspirational music from the Ukrainian Easter Choir. I felt it was important to be in Ukraine on Easter Sunday with the church. I wanted to identify with them and stand with them. And we want to preach Christ wherever we go. We want the world to know that God loves them and cares for them. Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but by me. How do we have eternal life? It's not by works, but it's by God's grace. And it's through faith in His Son, Jesus Christ. Jesus said, I'm the resurrection. We wanted this to be a Ukrainian service, and so, of course, we wanted a Ukrainian choir. The choir was incredible. They're made up of various churches in Lviv, but also there were a number of displaced people. Uh, these would be internal refugees who were living there in Lviv and heard that their choir was being put together, and they came and joined and uh, were part of it. And so, in the middle of their suffering, they came to help celebrate Easter with us. Music helps people to feel that they are not alone and that God is in control of everything. I sing because I want to glorify God. We sing as a choir to tell people that our hope is in God, and that hope cannot be taken away. Господь сказав, настоящі друзі, вони приходять під час біди. It's important to be light in the darkness. This is the time when you can put the seeds and it will grow. I don't know when I finish my life, but I know that God is with me. Христос є великою причиною не боятися, і він обіцяв залишитися вірним. We belong to the Lord. We are in His hands always. And that's joy of those who live and serve in Ukraine in time of war.
As you have seen, these are incredible people making a difference in their country and in the lives of the people uh, they're working with. The needs are tremendous. The conflict, if it stopped today, the need is going to be in Ukraine for years to come. So much damage, so much suffering, so much heartache. I want you to know that you can be a part of helping them. The Billy Graham Evangelistic Association, we plan to be involved for years to come. We have trained hundreds of chaplains. We have prayed with thousands of people, worked with the churches, encouraged the churches, strengthened the churches. But all of this is done for one purpose and one purpose only. We want the people of the world to know that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but should have everlasting life. So thank you. Because of your support, we're able to go to Ukraine and other places around the world and do it in Jesus' name. Partner with the Billy Graham Evangelistic Association as we continue to support and encourage the Ukrainian church in the months ahead. Call 877-567-8989 or go to billygram.tv right now. As a thank you for your support, you can receive Billy Graham's book, Who's in Charge of a World that Suffers? Join with us in sharing the good news of Jesus Christ in Ukraine and around the world. Visit billygram.tv or call 877-567-8989. Where darkness casts the greatest shadow, we will go. We still have a window of opportunity to reach a lost and dying world with the truth of God's love. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Jesus calls us to be the salt of the earth, the light of the world. Together, we are salt, light, good news.